things will happen to me in multiples. So of course I started investigating more and more and the more I investigated, the deeper hole I dug and the more I found out and the more I wanted to know and it was just a hole. Okay, so I'm gonna share a few of the really, really awesome coincidences that have been happening. So, God talks to me. No, I don't like to use that because it's a lot of negative, um, what's the word? There's a lot of people out there claiming to be prophets and saying God talks to them or no, not God talks to them, but God told them to say this and this and this. Yeah. I don't know what that's about, but personally, I felt like God was talking to me and I just said, but I felt like God was talking to me and like little things would happen that followed along, like things would, things would happen to me in multiples. So, so it's like, so anyway, I went and talked to someone at church and they said, that's normal. So I'm here like, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad that I've been writing everything down because if I didn't write it down, who would believe me? They think I'm making it up, right? So I don't, so if you have seen my videos or posts, my Instagram stories, um, there's a day that I posted, I'll share that story once I figure out how to do it. Um, I opened the Bible randomly and one of the first page, basically the first page I opened that had a message was Psalms 23, which is the Lord is my shepherd. This is probably my second day of reading the Bible, mind you. Yeah, so that was cool. Um, and there's just been so many like coincidences. I don't know how to, but anyway, so today I want to talk about like there is when was it? I have to open, I have to flip through the pages in my book. Can we talk about how weird the world is now? It can't just be me. There's no way I'm the only person who is seeing crazy things. Um, and the reason I'm so con convinced that things are strange is because I started reading the Bible fairly recently and I realized that a lot of the things that I was reading or describing events of current times that we're living in. So of course I started investigating more and more and the more I investigated, the deeper hole I dug and the more I found out and the more I wanted to know and it was just a whole, just a whole cycle. But yes, so my, what first piqued my interest was um, Let's see, Matthew 24. Oh, um, shout out to one of my pastors. He gifted me this really, really cute Bible. I really like it. It has like pictures. I mean, I'm an artist, so I like to see, I like to see colors. So it has like, for example, here, Matthew chapter 20. Um, it has like stuff like that. So like nice pops of color on some of the pages awesome okay so going to matthew 24 okay so matthew 24 describes the destruction of the temple um the apostles ask jesus what are the signs for the end times going to be and he it gives them very, very specific things, very, very specific information. Um, it goes on to say that the day and the hour is unknown, which it is unknown, 
but that's another conspiracy theory that I will go into another time. But anyway, um, so I'm going to read it directly. One of the first things that Jesus warned us about was he said, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I'm the Messiah and will deceive many. So I know everybody has their own way of interpreting the Bible. That's why it's always recommended. Like even I'm telling you now, do not listen to what I'm saying. Go read for yourself. Because how you read it, interpret it, that's, that's up to you. But this is how I read it, interpreted it. And it's also important to get with people and ask them, what does this mean to you? And share ideas. And it's called a Bible study. So study with people and you will see Um, so back to Matthew 24, I'm on verse three, sorry, verse four, um, et cetera. You will hear rumors, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Okay. So again, like I said, I don't know if it's just me, but the last three years have been something that's i think we can all agree we don't have to agree on every little thing but i think we can all agree that the last three years have been something i'm not gonna get into it but the last three years have been Interesting. Carrying on. So he, Jesus goes on to talk about how there will be famines and earthquakes. And these are called the beginnings of the birth pains. Now the reason why Matthew chapter 24 captured all my interest in Bible prophecy is because one, God's story never changes. Whatever he says, he does. Um, now, I mean, aside from like when he sent Jonah to go preach to the, to go warn people in Nineveh and he didn't, but then he warned them and they changed their ways. That doesn't count. So then God spared them. And God is very clear that if you heed the warnings of the prophets, that you will escape, you know, persecution or whatever. Um, but anyway, so God's word doesn't change and out of, I don't want to be wrong, but I think there might have been like, there's about maybe 2000, there's more than 2000 prophecies. I know that for sure. Again, I'm still brand new to the Bible, but I have read enough to know that it's legit. So I know one of the biggest messages is to not be afraid but it's kind of scary because life is life has changed as life as we know it has changed and it's not going to go back to how it used to be what's happening now is a lot of things are happening that are gearing to i mean this this sounds dramatic but i'm pretty sure the world is <clears throat> is on its way um, off the top of my head, things that I can mention are, gosh, there's also been a lot of evil things going on and I know evil sounds like a big word, but a lot of people are not noticing it because it's crept up on us very, very slowly. So those of you who've never heard about the story of like if you want to kill a frog by boiling it, you don't throw it into a pot of hot water. You slowly warm the water and the frog gets comfortable. And by the time they realize that they're boiling to death, the water is already too hot and they can't jump out. You know, see, it's the same thing with us. If you, like if the devil wanted to do evil stuff, 
he wouldn't be like, ah, I'm the devil. He wouldn't do that. No. He'd slow. <laughs> I didn't need to do that. He'd slowly start like warming our water, like warming us up to these ideas that we now think are normal, but are not normal. You know, I wasn't. A lot of stuff is not normal, guys. Like, it's, it's just, it's not normal. It's scary. Gosh. Um, like, the other day, I went to Barnes & Nobles. Like, this is an example. I went to Barnes & Nobles, and I went to the Bible aisle, and they have, they have one aisle split into three, right? Like, three shelves. On one shelf, on the first shelf, they have Bibles, and as you walk, how can I describe this? I'm just going to post a picture. But they have, basically they have Bibles and tarot cards and books about witchcraft on the same shelf. Now, maybe it's me who thinks old school, but that doesn't seem quite normal anybody wants to explain how that can be normal feel free but to me that's not normal um and to everyone else that i have asked they want to ask like three people and they were like that's weird but you know that story finished but you know stuff like that i'm pretty sure like back in the 1950s you wouldn't walk into a bookstore and have like tarot cards first of all tarot cards being openly sold that's kind of weird but also next to the Bible, you know? I don't know, I feel like that's the kind of thing if you want to buy, you go to like Spencer's or something. No shade to Spencer's, maybe they are shade, but anyway, that's, I don't want to be canceled for saying that. So anyway, there's stuff like that, and then, but it's but it's not even just, it's not even just the bookstores, like look look at concerts now. Look, look at um, the performances, they're straight up evil. We can't excuse any of that as art. Or, like, for example, in the Barnes and Noble, Noble situation, one of the excuses was that, yeah, it's part of religion. Okay. So, it makes no sense to me. Performances. Unless you're living under a rock, you already know what's happening with music. Things are not being hidden. I don't want to talk about the same topic everybody else has talked about. And a quick Google search will show you what our favorite celebrities are up to yeah which also leads me to talk about how like one day ah you know what is trending right now beyonce i guess like enough people have talked about her but i can talk about her too so um my journey with beyonce is as follows as i mean in high school not a fact now i've been listening to beyonce since 1998 since i was eight years old i've listened to beyonce and i know my age but um yeah i listened to beyonce since 1998 i grew up on her music knew all her songs well destiny's child then and then it became beyonce in high school and like she was like she was the best obviously i knew all her songs blah blah, blah. Um, and then the album, I forget what album it was, but it's the one that has Halo on it. Because I stopped being a fan. At some point, I just stopped caring. After Deja Vu, I was, I was done. Um, so, I, I personally felt a shift. But of course, we were like, oh, you know, she's just, it's just a new art form, blah, blah, blah. So we excused it, and we accepted it. And now looking back, I'm like, Wow, we really, it's like we were tricked into accepting that she had become darker. We're just, yeah, because it's a discussion that I've had with peers from years ago. We've been talking about this. But anyway, fast forward to, and so I stopped listening to her, not because I thought she was evil, but I just, I stopped liking her music to begin with. I just was no longer a fan. Okay, so fast forward to when this album came out renaissance um so me and a friend were trying to listen to it and um he he started playing it and 
and I just felt like I was listening to it, but then I started getting annoyed. So I started listening to the Beyonce album and I became like, my spirit was just irritated. Like I was just like, you know how you hear something and you're like, so the face that I just made, imagine your spirit making that face like what <laughs> anyway so so then i i was like mm, i don't like this so i left the room and i put my earphones in and started listening to something else in a different room um and i never I, I didn't think much of it i just thought maybe i just don't like the music and i moved on in my life and this was in 2022 Okay, so 2023, she announced a concert, and of course I was hyped, because I was like, as far as like, oh my gosh, she's Beyonce touring, and all my friends were like, ah, oh, we came for the Renaissance tour, so of course I banned with it, I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm going, and I was really, really psyched and everything, and then, um, so I have another friend who had bought extra tickets, and I told her, oh, because I had, I tried to buy tickets, but at that time there was like a waiting list and I never I never made it to the waiting list. But she did. She ended up buying tickets. I found out she had tickets. So then I she's like I told her, hey, if you don't have anyone to buy your tickets, I'll buy them when it's time to go for the concert because I really want to go. Alright, so this was back in what, February, March? Who knows? So fast forward to a couple of maybe like a month ago. I started like seeing videos pop up talking about don't go for Beyonce, don't go for Beyonce. And um, uh, let me not say seeing videos pop up. I came across, so I came across um, a video by Shams. I think his name is Shams. He's, he's like an Instagram interviewer, blogger person. And he interviewed Tiffany Montgomery, who I'd never heard about before, um, and about how she went viral for talking about Beyonce. So that piqued my curiosity, and I and I always obviously started doing research, and I discovered this video and all the Beyonce conspiracies had been talked about early in the year. I don't know what rock I was living under. I never heard about it until a month ago. So, of course, this is maybe two weeks before I'm supposed to be going for the concert. Okay. So, I let it go. No, no, I didn't let it go. I'm like, I started, like, putting two and two together, and I realized, oh, that's why I felt uneasy when I was listening to the album the first time. Because I don't know any of those songs. And, anyway. So what happened? Yeah, so then my friend texted me saying, hey, do you want to go? Do you still want those tickets? And I'm like, nah, I don't know. I like her. That story finished. Um, But anyway, so because of that whole, like, Beyonce, then I started seeing more and more people coming out to say, oh, so-and-so is demonic. And again, I don't know if been living under a rock or we just became desensitized. Des I can't say that word. Desensit desensitized. Desensitized. Yes. Never give up. To, um, you know, the evil nature. Or maybe I'm just, I don't know. Maybe, it's, let me speak for myself. I'm not going to say it's news to me, but I didn't think it was that deep. I honestly thought they were like, making a statement anyway so the reason i didn't think too much about it is because i guess i was living in the dark because once i discovered the bible oh my goodness everything started to make sense like everything immediately started to make sense and that is my story as to why now i'm like whoa the bible is amazing um anyway so why was i telling that story to go back to why I think we're living in dark times and the reason I personally think we're living in dark times is because again nobody knows when the world is ending but of course the devil um, also doesn't know but of course 
he's not too jazzed about people going to heaven because yeah so why i think like people are now like why witchcraft is no longer being hidden evil music is no longer being hidden all these scary things are no longer being hidden is because he knows time is short and he wants to like get as many people on his bad side as possible the devil just wants to get a lot of people to, he wants to take down as many people as he can to spite god or whatever whatever i don't know what the agenda is all i know is he knows time is running out and so now he wants to he wants to make sure like god's children don't go to heaven it is what it is i mean which makes sense but yeah this is a whole it's a whole historic overview which i like history so i guess i should probably break it down by years but anyway that was my introduction as to why i wanted to now share my stories also talk about like how god talks to me because he does he doesn't say words but he like i'll open random bible verses and the message will make sense oh yeah going back to the topic of um, bible prophecy so this morning I went to the grocery store and I've never seen figs in my life. I've seen like figs cut up, but I've never seen like whole figs in my life. Um, I've seen, TV doesn't count, but like I mean like in real life. Anyways, I've, I saw some figs at the grocery store and they were being sold buy one get one free like, like a small box of figs like a box of size buy one get one free um and so i stopped and i'm like oh that's that's strange this is a Publix, by the way like that's weird i've never seen figs all right so i know jesus refers to um israel well there's a parable about a fig tree um i don't know where it is right now but um i guess i can look it up but the parable of the fig tree and you know something about if you see the fig tree i'm trying to find it how do you find it okay i'm just gonna quickly read luke 21. okay yeah yay see i found it so luke 20 21 chapter 21 verse 29 jesus says look at the fig tree and all the trees when they sprout leaves you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near even so when you see these things happening you will know that the kingdom of god is near okay so that's significant because in the morning i was at the grocery store and i saw figs which i've never seen before in my life and i get into the car and I'm driving home from the grocery store and I'm listening to like a podcast and, and they were talking about this parable. And because the guy who was talking was Israeli and he was talking about how, yeah, you know, the fig represents Israel. And I'm like, but I, I just, I just saw some figs. What does this mean? So I know it's God speaking to me. And here I am, afternoon, making this video. So I guess I found everything pushed. But there's other signs. I'll make a video about all the other signs that God has given me because there's a lot. Um, there's a lot. But okay. I guess that's the end of today's video. Yay.